Alright guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna talk about Toronto Pro. So I wanted to make a couple of things clear, and I want to give my opinion on a couple of things. So first of all, Hadi Chopin. Is he competing or not? And as far as we know, he's not competing. In the beginning, everybody expected him to come. I think he announced that he's gonna do this show. He was on the list, on the official list. But eventually, it turned out that he doesn't have the visa once again. A couple of bodybuilding outlets announced this, that he's not gonna do it because of those visa problems. And I'm thinking, looking at him here, if he competes at this Toronto Pro, I think he will probably do the open class. I don't think he will go with 212. We already saw him competing with the big guys in the open division, and he did great. And he is one impressive bodybuilder. Yeah, he's a bit shorter, but I would give him at least top three at this show, potentially even winning the show. He's really good. He's really thick as a brick, this guy. He's a beast. He's an absolute force to be reckoned with. But the thing is, he cannot get visa to travel to Canada or USA. Which is funny, really, because we're gonna have Olympia coming up in a couple of months. And Hadi will probably not get visa, just like last year. If he came last year, I believe that he would win that Mr. Olympia. I think he's better bodybuilder than Flex Lewis. That's my take. That's just my opinion. He just looks more impressive. He looks bigger. He doesn't look like he is a 212 guy. Maybe he's just shorter. I'm not sure about the height. But he just looks more impressive. His legs look crazy, freaky. His shoulders as well. Everything else is on point. He's super conditioned and he has crazy fullness. And if this year at the Mr. Olympia he doesn't show up because of the visa problems and somebody else wins it, for example, who would win it? Derek Langsford? Is he anywhere near Hadi Chopin? <laughs> Not even close, man. Last year he was second, but his shoulders were soft. I mean, not just shoulders, but the shoulder area, basically the upper chest. There was no separation between his shoulders and chest. It looked just blurry, very, very soft, like, like baby's butt. But it just happened that Hadi didn't show up. And so, yeah, Flex won it. Maybe Flex would even win it. But right now, Flex is not here. He retired from 212. And so if Hadi doesn't get the visa, he doesn't show up at the Mr. Olympia, and we have a new champion, somebody else aside from Hadi, they will not be a rightful king of the throne. It would be bad for the sport, because we have another bodybuilder who is also 212 division, who is much better than anybody else in that lineup. Much better. Let's admit it. This guy is just impressive as hell. So the question that I want to ask you guys is why Mr. Olympia has to happen in the USA. I know, USA is the land of bodybuilding. Most fans are there, and if it happened in another country, not so many people would be there to watch it. That's true. That's true. It absolutely makes sense. It doesn't really make sense to do it any other way because of the business. Because IBB Pro League is a business. Jim Manuel is a businessman. This all actually exists because somebody wants to make money. It doesn't exist because of the love for the sport or whatever. This is just a business for some people. For us, it's not just a business. But for the people who are actually making this possible, it's just a business. So I absolutely understand. It has to happen in the USA. But USA happens to be the country that is the hardest one to get into, as well as Canada. So I, I'm sure it's going to happen more often in the future, especially now with Trump being the president, that many people won't be able even to get to the USA to compete. So whoever wins 12 Mr. Olympia and doesn't beat Hadi is not the rightful champion. But I guess business doesn't care about that. And it is what it is. We're going to talk about this a little bit more as Mr. Olympia is approaching. But right now, I wanted to show a little bit more updates about this Toronto Pro. First of all, is Nathan Diash even doing it? I've seen a couple of media outlets saying that he jumped in. But then I've seen people who say that he's not allowed to travel outside of his country because of the legal issues. But I think Nathan Diash wants to tease us the reporters, and also the competitors, probably, by posting certain things on his social media or his Instagram, just like he did two days ago. And he said in that story that I posted in the video before, one tab away, and I wasn't sure what it meant, but it was so logical, I don't know how I didn't think of it, it meant one tablet away. And when you say tablet, of course, he means diuretic. 
And if by some miracle he actually showed up, he would probably be the winner. Unless Hadi shows up. If Hadi Chopin shows up, but I don't think they will show up, especially not Hadi. Judging by this video that Avogen Nutrition posted the two days ago, he doesn't look ready for the show, but maybe he's also a few diuretics away. I'm not sure. And uh, if both of these guys don't show up, it's gonna be a battle between Ian Wallier and uh, John De La Rosa. And then Fernando Arroyo's Instagram page, <laughs> Fernando predicted that Ian is gonna win it, and I commented, he's not gonna do it. I think John is gonna win it. But then Ian actually commented himself, and basically he said that John is not gonna win it from the back, as Fernando already said that he's gonna beat him only from the back. And so if this is true, if Ian actually improved his back that much, that it looks better than John's back, it would be a huge transformation if this is true, and this would also up his placing at the Mr. Olympia. That guy is a beast from the front, but from the back he was a little bit shallow, and if he improved his back as he claims, that it can actually be better than John's back, then that would be a world-class back combined with world-class front body, which would make a hell of a complete bodybuilder, and we can see him maybe even cracking the top six, if this is true, but this is a long shot, I don't think he improved his back that much, but, you know, all things are possible, we'll see, we'll see what happens. And I'm looking at James Hollingshead as well, he looks dry, this guy looks peeled, he looks completely dry, and once he carved up completely, he's gonna look even harder, unless he spills over, which is probably not gonna happen, he has already a couple of competitions in these competitive seasons behind him on his belt, so he probably has more experience, and in all likeliness, he's not gonna mess it up. He's gonna come dry and hard. We'll see. We'll see how he looks. So maybe it's gonna be between these three guys in the top three. Maybe Josh Wade is not gonna crack it. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, tell me what you guys think about it. Tell me, do you think Mr. Olympia should maybe be held somewhere outside the States because of the visa problems or not? Do you think Hadi would win in this lineup? Do you think Hadi would win at the Mr. Olympia in 12 category? Do you think Ian actually improved his back that much? Do you think Nathan will show up and win the show? Whatever you think, tell me in the comment section below and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to my channel. All the best guys, bye bye.